Oh 
of prayer and a house of worship. your way back to your seats. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be in the presence of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. How many of you know what tomorrow is? 
If you're off of work tomorrow, you know what tomorrow is. I know what tomorrow is. I'm excited to be off, excited to have some time off. And there's nothing like going to bed Sunday night knowing you don't have to go to work Monday morning. That's a good feeling. That's a good feeling. But uh, tonight I'm looking in the word of the Lord. I'm looking at Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 25. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 25, it says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now these, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And then in contrast to this, It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. And if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And uh, I really didn't know what to title this tonight, uh, they were asking me before for a title for the video, and I really don't know. It's just, it's just feet in two worlds, the, the natural and the spiritual. And for us as Christians, this is how we operate. This is how we live. And that's just kind of what I'm going to talk about here tonight. If we can, one more time, I know we've prayed. Let's just pray that God would help us in the remainder of this service, that he, what he wants to say, that it would be said, that we would receive it, that we would uh, have it impact us the way that he wants it to. God, we love you tonight. Lord, we thank you once again for what we feel in this house. Lord, there's nothing better than, Lord, than being in the presence of the Lord. And, Lord, feeling that, God, that you are close, that, God, that you're here. And, God, we feel feel that here tonight. And God, it's reassuring, Lord. It's strengthening. It's comforting, Lord, when we can feel the Holy Ghost. And God, what we know that you've shown up for a reason, that God, you're here with purpose. God, you're here with intention. And God, whatever you want to do, God, whatever you want to say, I pray that it would be done. That, Lord, nothing would stop, Lord, what you're wanting to do. That, Lord, our hearts would be ready to receive the Word of God. That, Lord, that it would have a lasting impact on us that beyond this service. And God, we pray pray it. We believe you for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. You can be seated. You know, when some read this verse, walk in the spirit, and I know that we're familiar with this, this verse, uh, some immediately think of all night prayer meetings and speaking in tongues and red hot revival services. And you would be correct in thinking that that might be part of it. All of that may be included as part of walking in the Spirit. But I think sometimes we separate what we think are spiritual things from what we feel are natural things. And uh, like the two don't go hand in hand. And they really, they do. The natural and the spiritual really go hand in hand. And I'll, we're going to talk about that here in a minute. Let's talk about some natural things. We're pretty good at talking about natural things. Uh, food. I've been celebrating Memorial Day all week. We had barbecue for, anybody know what Four Rivers barbecue is? If you haven't been there, you're in for a blessing. You're in for a treat. Go there, get the brisket, sandwich, ribs, whatever. It's all good. I don't know about you guys. I tend to enjoy food. I, I like food. I enjoy food. I enjoy eating food. I don't think that we're supposed to be gluttonous. I feel like we come close to that line sometimes. But you know, who really made us to be able to enjoy food the way we do? It's God. God is the one who set it up that we would have to eat food. He's the one who set it up that some of this food would be absolutely delicious. 
You ever ate something and you take a bite and you're like, this is probably the best thing I have ever tasted in my life. You're already online leaving a review. This place is amazing. Doesn't feel very spiritual when we're talking about brisket and ribs and stuff, does it? Did you know that eating food is not bad? You're not bad because you're enjoying a good meal. You're not being carnal because you're enjoying good food. Now, you can be carnal. You can be bad in in, uh, some of these enjoyments that God made for us. But enjoying your food is not bad. 1 Corinthians 10, 30 through 31 says, If I can thank God for the food and enjoy it, why should I be condemned for eating it? So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Now, this verse, he's talking about food that might have been offered to idols and whether to eat it or not. I understand that, but it's clear. He's also talking about if I can thank God for the food and then I can eat it and enjoy it, I can do all of that and everything for the glory of God. How about your work? I'm sure none of you guys feel very spiritual going to work on Monday morning. That does not summarize what we think of walking in the spirit, getting up and going to the job. Romans 12, 11 says, and this is in a different translation than they may have on the screen. Uh, it says, not slothful in business, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. In another translation, it says, don't be lazy in your work, but work enthusiastically as if unto the Lord. In other words, in your work, in your job, and it's talking about your work. It's not talking just about the kingdom work. It's talking about your job that you go to Monday through Friday. Ephesians 4.28 says, anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. He said, you've been born again, and it's time for you to stop your stealing and go out and get an honest job and pay for your own way and then pay for others as well. And you have enough to share with others. Proverbs twelve eleven says, he that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread. But he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. Or in the New Living Translation, it says a hard worker has plenty of food. But a person who chases fantasies has no sense. Work is not something that we would call spiritual or what we would, uh, or some might even consider it a worldly pursuit is work. And it can be that. But it seems that God even cares about how we work while we are here. How we go to work, what our attitude is like while we're working, that God seems to care about even these things and that and that how we work can also bring glory to God. So work as unto the Lord. If I go to work and uh, and really how I work can also uh, destroy my testimony and my witness that if I show up and I'm always late. And I've got the worst attitude on the team and I'm, and I'm the slowest, laziest worker and all this. And then I open up my mouth and I want to talk about the goodness of God and I want to talk about how God will change your life. And they're like, well, I've got my act together more than you do. I think it pleases God when we do all this stuff that we would consider natural things that, that some might even consider carnal things that there's scripture that it, it matters to God how we even go about our daily business. And it's not always just uh, spiritual business. Sometimes it's natural business that God has a lot to say about that, even about how we handle our money. God has a lot to say about it. Apparently God seems to care about how I live this natural life. All this stuff we do in the natural is not as much separated from the spiritual as we tend to think it is. I believe God even wants you to enjoy some things in this life. I think God wants you to even enjoy some things. That it's okay for you to enjoy some things in this life. That God wants that for you. The Bible says if an evil father knows how to give good gifts to his children, how much more does our father in heaven know how to give good gifts to his children? Some of it he already has. Some of the stuff that we enjoy so much, eating and drinking coffee and and uh, just being out in nature. And there's so many things he's already given us to enjoy. And you're not being unspiritual because you're enjoying some of the things that God gave you to enjoy the bible says every good gift good and perfect gift comes down from above from the father of lights 
All this stuff we do in the natural is not as much separated from the spiritual as we tend to think it is. Raising kids can be spiritual and can reflect the glory of God. Now, there's never been a time where I've felt more in my flesh or more carnal than when I'm at home with the children. I don't feel like I'm walking in the prophetic and walking in the spirit. I feel like I'm about this close from really walking in the flesh. We don't, we don't feel that spiritual when we're doing some of these things, raising our kids. But, you know, it, apparently it matters to God how we raise our kids. That raising kids can be spiritual and can reflect the glory of God. And you know, and for, for some, they, they think, well, I don't really, I can't really spend time with family because I'm out, I'm building the kingdom. I'm doing kingdom work. Do you know that what you have at home is kingdom work? My kids are part of the kingdom of God. My wife is part of the kingdom of God. These are the most important disciples in my life are the ones that are in the back seat and sleeping in the other rooms in my house. They are part of the kingdom of God. And, and we'll justify sacrifice and family. Well, I don't have time for family because I gotta, I gotta go teach a Bible say. I gotta invest in someone in the kingdom. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm living in the same house with some people in the kingdom. That when I invest in them, I'm also investing in the kingdom. When I go on vacation with them, I'm investing in part of the kingdom of God. Just like I would go to the coffee shop with a friend or someone you're discipling to invest in because, man, this is kingdom work. Well, so is my family. So is my loved ones. You can't really separate the two. You know, strong families make strong churches. I don't know how it's going to benefit the church if I leave my family in the dust and I'm not there for my kids or for my wife and I'm, and I'm always out there doing kingdom work when I'm neglecting the most important part of the kingdom that God gave me to work on is those immediately around me. All this stuff we do in the natural, it's not as separated as we, as we think. You know how many scriptures there are on raising kids and on the family? Train up a child in the way that he should go. You know, my, uh, I grew up in a pastor's home. I, I was born in Albany, Georgia. The great, my mom is a huge Georgia fan, by the way. She loves the state of Georgia. We actually went back there in November. I haven't been there since I was maybe eight years old and went back and saw the old church that my parents were uh, pastoring then. I mean, I was born in a pastor's home. I was born into a home missions church. That's, that's just the way I was raised. And, uh, my parents were godly people, godly influences, pastoring a church, doing the work of God, building the kingdom of God. And I have memories of us doing spiritual things, but I would say 95% of my memories have nothing to do with spiritual things. It, it does and it doesn't because those two worlds are more intertwined than we think. But I've got a lot of memories of me and dad running trot lines at midnight catching catfish that's as close to walking in the spirit as some of us can get. When we're out there fishing, we're like, all right, now we're, we're getting close to God. You're out there hunting and fishing. You're, I mean, I have a lot of memories about he teaching me how to fish, teaching me how to clean a fish. Well, that's not spiritual. You know, teaching me how to ride a bike, playing basketball. I got a lot of memories of mom reading us books as kids. And we had a lot of laughter in our home. We had a lot of good times in our home. They took us on trips. And I have one memory of one day they were uh, taking us to school. And uh, they drove by the school and then kept on going. And I remember me and Amber were just flipping out. We're going to be late for school. Now I'd be like, this is great. <laughs> let's, let's skip school. Uh, yeah, keep going. Don't tell them. Don't, they forgot. How long will they notice or they forgot it's a school day? But we were, oh, the school, the school, turn around. We didn't have any sense. We didn't know. And then after, you know, 10 minutes of us flipping out about we're going to miss school, the worst thing in the world, they pull out, and I don't know why they did this, they pulled out two fanny packs. I think one was blue and one was pink, and it was filled with stuff, and they were taking us to Disney World, skipping school to go to Disney World. You know how excited we were as kids? You know how spiritual that was? <laughs> I 
But my, my point is that all of this, it was very much, inter- my parents had it, we had a godly home. And there was spiritual stuff that happened, but we were very much a, a normal family with love and laughter. And, and I really think where the godliness was, was we had a, a godly, righteous home, and then the fruit of the Spirit was there. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, long-suffering. This, this was in our home, and this was the godliness. We weren't, we weren't up in the living room doing 24-hour prayer meetings at home and speaking in tongues. No, we were laughing and playing games and playing basketball and, and doing this stuff, but that built a strong family. You know, Paul in uh, 1 Timothy, he goes into detail concerning women taking care of their household properly and raising their kids in a godly way so that the enemy cannot say anything against them. He was talking about raising their kids and and handling their household and doing it in such a way that the enemy, that Satan has nothing to say against them. And it wasn't talking about spiritual warfare and all. It's talking about raising those kids and taking care of the house. And then he goes on, he said, uh, he said, some of them have already, uh, followed Satan because of their gossip and their laziness and they weren't doing what they should have been doing in the home. Instead, they were out running their mouths and doing other stuff. And he said, some of them already follow Satan because of this. And it wasn't talking about just being way out there. And these are people in the church he's talking about. There's a whole lot of, I think these two worlds intermingle more than we think. Apparently there is a connection between the natural and the spiritual. That what I do in one affects where I stand in the other. What happens in the spirit affects us in the natural world. The worlds are or are supposed to be very much connected for us as Christians. You know what happens here on Sunday? You know, kind of like tonight, we have a powerful move of God and we hear the preach word of God. And then we make commitments to God. We gather around the altar and we pray and we connect to the spirit of God. And all of these things we would consider spiritual activities that bring glory to God and and have an impact on us. And all of that is true. But we don't turn off the spiritual side when we go home on Sunday night and then go to the job and live in the natural world for the next six days. And then we come back next Sunday and then we do spiritual things again. That's not how it's supposed to be. But rather, we allow what happens here on Sunday to affect every other area of our life. And what happens in your morning prayer before you go to work is meant to affect every other area of your life. When we pray in the altar, when the Word of God speaks to us and challenges us, when we are praying and speaking in tongues and making those commitments to God, we we leave and we allow those things to impact every area of our life. You know, for the world, their mantra is what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. I want to ask how many people have been to Vegas or how much money you lost there. Let that not be said of the church, that what happens in church stays in church. This is not how God intended it to be, that, well, what happens in church, it stays there, and it doesn't follow us home, and it doesn't bleed over into other areas of our life, that this was not the intention of God, that we would come into his presence, experience the glory and the power of God in a mighty way, but then that experience would affect us when we go home and when we go to our job, and it would bleed over into areas area, every area of our life. God wants what happens at church to not stay at church, but to go home with us and out into the streets and on our jobs and everywhere we go. If you go back to Acts chapter two, when the church was birthed, the Bible says that there were 120 that gathered together in an upper room and they were waiting on the promise. And there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house and they were speaking in tongues and there was cloven tongues as fire and they were under the influence of the Holy Ghost. And then they shut it down before the before they left that room and they went home and, and nobody knew about it. No, the Bible says that they spilled out into the street. They came out of the church. They came out of the upper room. And what, and what happened in the church didn't stay in the church. What happened in the upper room did not stay in the upper room. It moved into the street. Peter gets up and preaches to the crowd. And 3,000 people repented of their sins and were baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with the Holy Ghost because what happened in the upper room didn't stay in the upper room. They allowed it to bleed out into the everyday normal life out into the street it was meant to impact every area Peter and John walk into the temple 
See the man laying there, such as I have, give I unto thee. You know what? What I've gotten in my experiences with God, what I've gotten in the church house and what I've gotten in the altar and what I've gotten in the prayer room, I'm able to give you some of it. I'm able to, now you don't even have to come to church with me. We're, we're outside of the temple, but what I've received in the temple, I can give it to you out here on the street because this is the way God intended for it to be, that we would be endued with power from on high and then we would go out into the street and we would affect our neighborhoods and our workplaces and everywhere we go because of what we have received and it was not meant to stay in just the place we received it. I would go as far to say that we are not what we call spiritual if we have spiritual experiences but no change in our life. That if what happens at church stays at church, then I would say we're not really that spiritual. Look what Paul has to say to Timothy in the church in taking care of the widows and what responsibility the widow's family plays. And this doesn't sound very spiritual, but I think it's important to God. First Timothy chapter five, verse three through four. He says, take care of any widow who has no one else to care for her. But if she has children or grandchildren at home, their first responsibility is to show godliness at home and repay their parents by taking care of them. This is something that pleases the Lord. It's at church and in our private prayer lives and time spent in the word of God that we are equipped and challenged and convicted and changed. And then we should show that godliness at home. It should show up at work. It should show up everywhere that we go that what we have received in the church house or in a prayer experience or when we were filled with the Holy Ghost or what happened on Sunday. It it shouldn't be something that's, well, That that's what happens on Sunday and then the rest of the week is where I live in the natural and then I go back to spiritual things. No, these worlds are very much intermixed for the Christian that we walk in both worlds at all times. You are being more godly than you realize when you honor your father and your mother. Did you know that? We think of being spiritual as I'm I'm in the floor, I'm in intercession. You know what? All of that is true. But I can't, I, I can come in here and speak in tongues all day long. But then if I go home and I'm disrespectful and I dishonor and I'm hateful towards my family, there is zero ounce of spirituality in my system. That what I experience here, it should affect how I act and how I treat others everywhere else I go. You're being more godly than you realize by honoring your mom and dad. This is one of the Ten Commandments, by the way. Did you know that? One, one of the only Ten Commandments that has a promise attached to it. That if you will honor your father and your mother, things will go well with you. Did you know that? Apparently, this matters to God. You are pleasing to God when you take care of your family. This pleases God. And we would think of this as, uh, man, well, we gotta, we have to go to work. We have to provide our family. And then we get about to the, the more important things. Well, those are more important things too, but so is this business that we do in the natural. That's important too. You're pleasing to God when you train up your child in the way that they should go. And when they're old, They don't depart from it. You're pleasing to God when dads don't provoke their children to anger. I think it pleases God when families get together and laugh and love and support one another. I think God is pleased with that. I think it pleases God when the church family get together in homes and break bread and fellowship and have game nights. And we laugh and we and we enjoy each other's coming. I think God is pleased with that. I think God's pleased when we have red hot prayer meetings and we're speaking in tongues and people are interceding. And I think God is also pleased when we're, when we're in the back and we're eating good food and we're laughing and having a good time and, and I, maybe I'm beating Fred in chess. Who knows? It, I think God is pleased with all of that. <laughs> he would kill me in chess. All right. I won't even play him. Don't get me wrong, game nights, fellowship, this does not replace the worship and prayer and speaking in tongues and the gifts of the Spirit. We need all of that. It's almost like I have feet in two worlds at the same time. We walk in the Spirit, we speak in tongues, we worship, we pray, we read our Bibles, we shout, we dance, and then we go to work. We sit down for dinner. 
We go clean the bathroom, clean the toilets, vacuum the carpet. All spiritual things, right? We get stuck in I-4 in traffic. That's spiritual. and It's a test. It's testing the fruit. It's seeing where you're at. We go to the park. We run errands. We, we go do stuff with the kids. I was at the park with the kids the other night, and I'm, I play harder than they do. I go down every slide. And I do the monkey bars. We do it all. You know what? I think it pleases God that a dad is spending time with his kids and having fun, and they're laughing and playing and, and building a relationship. This is, this is part of kingdom work. I think God is pleased with it. I think what God would not be pleased is if I, well, I can't, I can't play with you kids ever because I always have to pray. I'll be in the prayer closet if something really important happens. Now, I do think we need a prayer closet and we need to be in the prayer and our kids need to know it. But I also need to be there for my kids and I need to laugh with them and, and play with them and I, I need both. God did not meant for us to be born again and then live at the church and never work another day in our life. Man, I wish, wouldn't that be good? I've looked for that promise in the word of God. I haven't found it. Never go to the store. Never eat food, drink water again. We just live at the church and just pray. This is not what God intended. And this is not what we do. I know this is not what we do. We all, we live in the natural. You know, when we were born again, I don't know about you guys, I wasn't given a glorified body. Maybe you have yours. Maybe you walk through walls when we're not looking and you fly home and I don't know. I live in the natural. But I also live in the spiritual. These worlds are very much intertwined. Should we pray? Yes. Should we fast? Yes. We should and we need to and we need more of it. But that's not all we do. God's intention is that we would be born again. We would be a new creature in Christ Jesus. The the Bible says the old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new and that we would be endued with power from on high. For what? It's not just to dance in the altar. And yes, that's part of it. I, I, I will dance, I'll rejoice, but that's not the only reason we've been endued with power. It's for us to then leave outside of these walls and and go into our natural world and allow the spiritual to affect what happens in the natural when we leave this room. It's so that we could be a part of the body of Christ, which is the church. It's so that we could be his ambassadors here on earth. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ and God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. Be reconciled to God. You know, I don't think we bring glory to God and are not good witnesses for Christ or ambassadors for Christ. If we speak for Christ when we are trying to reach others, but our personal life is just an absolute wreck and, and being with God has not influenced any area of my life, that I am still bound in the same stuff, I'm still stuck in the same stuff, but rather when we connect with the Spirit of God and His, and He abides in us and we abide in Him, that there should be some changes that begin to happen in my life, in the way I treat my family and the way even I work and the attitude I have at work and, and the attitude I have at home. And there should be some changes that are going on that I notice in my natural world. And it's happening because I'm connected to the supernatural. I'm connected to the spirit of God. And and thus I begin seeing changes in my very natural world. Paul says in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, verse one, he said, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. 
He's describing people doing spiritual things. Man, they're operating in the gift of prophecy. They're, they're operating in the gift of the spirit. They're, they're doing spiritual things. But then he said that without the fruit, without the love of God, he said it means absolutely nothing. He said, I don't care if you do operate in the gifts of the spirit. He said, if your heart is not right, if you don't have the love of God, if you don't have the fruit of the spirit in your life, he said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. This is why Jesus, you know, the Bible says that um, at, there's coming a day where people are going to stand before him and they're going to say, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out devils in your name? We, we've done all these things. And he will say, depart from me, I never knew. But we were doing spiritual things. But apparently that connection to the spirit, that connection to the supernatural never bled over into the natural areas of their life where my attitude wasn't changed and my my heart condition wasn't changed and, and the way I treated people didn't change and my love didn't change apparently something there was a disconnect that they were involved in spiritual things but not to the point where it affected every area of their life this is why we need the fruit of the spirit the fruit of the spirit is part of that check that i am connected to god that it is changing me and that long suffering and that gentleness and that love and that kindness and uh, the faith and all these things, man, it, it doesn't just show up on Sunday. It just doesn't show up on Sunday night when I'm in the altar and I'm like, well, now the gifts, now the fruit of the spirit is here. No, the fruit of the spirit is in us in Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. And that, that's what it's for. The fruit of the spirit is not for me in the prayer closet. It's for me when I go to work and people can say there is something different about that individual. They've got love when I don't have it. They have peace when I don't have it. They have joy when I don't have it. They have faith when I don't have it. And why? It's because you are connected to the supernatural Amen. going back to Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 it says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit or follow the spirit be occupied with the spirit. To walk in the spirit means to regulate the practical, the natural life by the spirit of God. That my natural world will be ordered by the supernatural, by the spirit of God. That my steps would be ordered of the Lord. That yes, these steps are made in the natural. These steps are going to Publix probably after church to go buy donuts. But, but you know what? They are, they're, they're, I'm influenced by the spirit of God in all these natural things that I'm doing. They're more connected than we think. We, sometimes we isolate it and we think, well, I've got the natural stuff over here and I've got the, I've got the spiritual stuff over here and, and we run back and forth from Sunday to Sunday that, all right, now I'm back in the natural and then we run back to the spiritual and no, these worlds are connected for us. When I go home, I've got feet in both worlds. I'm, I'm sitting at my house, but you're also walking in the spirit. Walking in the spirit means it's not just an all-night prayer meeting. It's when you go to work, you're allowing the spirit of God to influence your actions and your thinking and your decisions. And you're allowing God to order your steps and lead you as you go about the day. You're being led of the spirit in all the natural things that we do. This is why you can go to Publix and get donuts. I'm, I'm advertising for them. <laughs> but if you have feet in both worlds, you're in Publix, but you can also be in the spirit at the same time. And you can be influenced by the Holy Ghost. And God can help you know that there's someone in that store that needs to hear something. Or maybe you start a conversation with somebody and you begin feeling the prompting of the spirit that God has something for this person and you can say something to them that might turn the course of their life. All because you've got feet in both worlds. That you walk in the spirit as you walk in the natural. I'm not talking about one foot in the church and one foot in the world. That's not what I'm talking about. But you can't separate it. It will be separated one day. When God comes back for his church and we're raptured out of here. 
I will no longer be walking in the natural around here. Uh, it, it will be a, a different uh, dimension. We will have glorified bodies. It's, it's going to change. But when God filled me with the Holy Ghost and he called me, he sent me right back out into the same world. I went home and I still look the same. My house looked the same. I don't have a glorified house. My house is the same. Your job may be the same. But what's different is that now you have connected to the supernatural. You've been endued with power from on high so that when you go back to that job, you're not going by yourself. You're going in the spirit of the Lord. You're going in the name of the Lord. You're going with the help of the Lord. When you go back to that problem, you go back to that issue, you're not going by yourself. You're going with the spirit of the Lord on the inside of you. You're going with more understanding and more clarity and more faith and more peace and more joy than you ever had. If we can, we can stand. I'm, I'm closed in here. I heard T.F. Tenney say one time, talking about praying without ceasing. He said, I rarely pray for an hour. And we would say, oh, Brother Tenney. He said, but I rarely go an hour without praying. He's basically saying he prays all day. There's just com- this conversation with the Lord that just doesn't stop. When we go and we pray before we go to work, we don't punch in and then punch out and then, all right, that stays there in the prayer closet, that stays there at the church house or wherever you pray, and then now I'm in the natural for the rest of the day, and then that's it. No, we clock in and we don't clock out. I go to work and I'm I'm still clocked in. I'm clocked in in two places. I'm clocked in at work and I'm also clocked into the supernatural. It's walking in the spirit. These worlds are very much intertwined. And what I do in one affects what happens in the other. This is why over here in the natural, it matters what I watch and what I listen to. And because if I'm watching all kinds of garbage all week long and I'm listening to all kinds of mess all week long and, and then I come over here on Sunday and I, I, I come back to the spiritual things and then I wonder why I can't feel the presence of the Lord and why I feel dry as dust. It's because what I've been doing over there is affecting what I'm doing over here. And what I'm doing over here affects what happens over there. When I come here and I pray in tongues and I, I shout in the presence of God and I go to the prayer closet. You know what? It affects what happens over here when I go to work tomorrow. It, ha- it affects what happens when I'm, when I'm meeting people in the grocery store. What happens in one world affects what happens in the other. And we live in both. And there's things I can do over here that can help what happens over there. And what happens over there, I promise you, always helps what happens over here. I think we, the Lord wants to help us. For some that have been confused with, I can't enjoy people's company. I I can't go and do things because I'm, I'm doing kingdom business. You know what? There is a place for that. But God meant for all this to be very much intertwined. For us to be there for one another. Love one another. Laugh. I think it's okay. I think God is pleased when we get together and we laugh and we have a good time. I also think God is pleased when we come here and we we tear the roof off on Sunday. I think God loves both. I think we need both. And I think understanding that I walk in both worlds. And the more I can keep those worlds intertwined, the better off I will be. The more I can bring the supernatural into the natural world. I'm telling you what happens in the, in the spirit, it affects what happens in the natural. And the more I can stay connected in that world, the more things are going to change in this world. And the more I can bring heaven in and bring heaven into my situation and into my job and into my workplace and into my neighborhood and, and for my neighbors and the people that you go to Publix after church and all that, they may see you walking in the natural, but what they don't know is that you're walking in the spirit at the same time. What they don't know is that there's angels that go with you and there's, there's the hand of God that goes with you and there's, there's power on the inside of you. And, and God has gifted you and God works through you and, and God wants to use you. And they may see somebody just walking in the natural, but what they don't see is that you walk in the spirit as well. And that changes everything. And that's when you can go, hey, such as I have, give I unto thee. 
I've got something that you don't have. I may be in the same kind of clothes you are, but I've got something on the inside that you may not have. And you can help someone. You can pray for someone. You can uh, see somebody healed or delivered or encouraged. Why? Because you know how to walk in both worlds. You know how to walk in the spirit when you go to work. You know how to walk in the spirit when you go home. You know how to walk in the spirit when you're going through the store. That you don't clock out in of one and clock out of the other. I clock into both in the morning and then don't unclock in either one. I think God wants to help us. Why don't we take a minute? Let's just lift up our hands. Let's pray to the Lord for a moment. Jesus, we love you tonight. God, I thank you so much that Lord... For all the things that you've given us here in this world to enjoy. Even the natural things. God, we're thankful for it. God, we're thankful for every blessing. We're thankful for our homes and our our families and the enjoyments that we have. And God, I thank you also for the spiritual blessings that we have. God, we have been changed. God, we are in the process of being changed. That God, you're changing our attitudes. You're changing our motives. You're changing our desires. Lord, you're changing everything in us. And God, we thank you for that. And God, God, I pray that you would help us, that, Lord, when we wake up in the morning, Lord, to connect to the Spirit, and, Lord, allow the Spirit of God to influence every decision we make and to influence every corner and area of our life. God, I want it to inter- I want it to affect every area of my life. Lord, let the Spirit of God, Lord, let it affect my family. Let it affect my home. Let it affect my attitude. God, let it affect the way I work. Lord, let everything I do give you glory because the Spirit of God is working in me. Hallelujah. God, help us, Lord, to be good to our families. Help us, God, to be good to our neighbors. Help us, God, to show loving kindness to others. Let the fruit of the Spirit be in us. God, help others to see it. Help others to see that there's something different about us. God, let it, they may not understand that we walk in two worlds. But God, I pray that they would see the influence of the Spirit in our natural life. That they would see the influence of the Spirit in our attitude and in our behavior, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Why don't we just gather around the fun? Why don't you find a place to pray? Pray that God would help you in this business. All the, all the stuff that you do in the natural on a daily, on a daily schedule. The errands that you run, the, the issues that you face, the stuff that you're going through, the job that you have to go through. I, I pray that you would pray to God, that God would help you in all these areas, that these worlds could be very much intertwined, that I wouldn't go to work without the Spirit of God, that I wouldn't go home without the Spirit of God, but that the Spirit would influence every corner, every reach of my life. Hallelujah. Lord, let it influence every decision. God, let it influence my attitude and my behavior, Lord. I pray that, God, we would be led of the Spirit. And that, God, we would be able to intermingle amongst this world as ambassadors for Christ. But, Lord, endued with power from on high. That, Lord, we would have something to offer them. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. That's it. God cares about what you deal with in the natural too. He cares about your sickness. He cares about your job. He cares about your home. He cares about your car. He cares about all the stuff that's in your natural life too. He didn't take it away from you when he filled you with the spirit, but yet he left you with all this natural stuff. He cares about that too. In other words, God cares about my sickness. He cares about my pain. He cares about my family. He cares about my job. He cares about everything that involves my life. And if he cares about it, I know that he's going to help me. That's it. Why don't you pray that God would help you to bring glory to the Lord by the way we go to work, 
by the way we talk, by the way we treat our family, by the way we conduct our business. Lord, let everything that we do, let it reflect the glory of God. Let it reflect the goodness of God. Let it reflect the change and the influence that the Spirit has on us. God, let it reach an area of our life and let all of that bring glory and honor to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to honor God in the way I go to work. I want to bring glory to God in the way I talk to my neighbors. I want to bring glory to God in the way I treat my family. In the way I treat these brothers and sisters in this house. you lay your hand on the shoulder of someone next to you grab a hand of someone next to you pray that God would help them they leave this building and they go back into their natural world they face things that you don't face they have stuff going on that you may not know about pray that the spirit of the Lord would go with them pray that they would be able to walk in the spirit so that when they face those issues when they face those things when they face those temptations that they don't are not overcome with the temptation but instead the spirit helps them overcome that when they face the 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 issue that they have going on at home or on their job that the spirit of God would help them to have victory in that area of their life that God would give them peace in that area of their life that God God would give them direction and guidance that their life would be led of the Spirit. God, I pray for my brother, my sister here tonight. God, they work jobs. Lord, they they live in homes and in neighborhoods. They've got errands to run. They've got doctor's visits. They, They have all the same natural stuff I have to deal with. God, help them, Lord, to do all these things while walking in the Spirit. Lord, let the Spirit of God influence everything that they do in the natural. God, let it be evident to others that there's something else at work on the inside of them. God wants to use them. God wants to use them when they go back into their natural world, when they go back into the workplace. God is desperately wanting to use the person that you've got your hand on right there. Pray that God would use them in the way that he wants to. Pray that the spirit of God would operate through them. Pray that they would walk in the spirit in such a way that it it affects their entire workplace, that that hungry people are drawn to them and, and that God would give them the words to speak and that God would anoint them and use them. God, anoint my brother, my sister. Lord, when they leave this house, that, Lord, they would take the Spirit of the Lord with them, that they would take the gift of the Spirit with them, that they would take the fruit of the Spirit with them. Let them take it to work. God, let it affect their job. Let it affect their home and their family.